Hello, my name's Jane Newsom and I'm a friend of St Anne's Church in Chasetown. This weekend there was a strange noise in my back garden and when I opened the back door to investigate I saw that the noise was coming from a squirrel up in the big oak tree at the bottom of our garden. It was making loud rasping noises, the sort of noises I've never heard a squirrel made before, make before, and it was leaping from branch to branch. This went on for several minutes and then finally it leapt onto a branch of a tree in our neighbour's garden, made a final few squirrel chuntering noises and then disappeared off into the foliage. I have no idea what had upset that squirrel, but it was certainly determined to have its voice heard. Thinking about it afterwards, I've been thinking that actually this lockdown, it's been quite difficult to have our voices heard, hasn't it? I love singing hymns in church. I haven't got a particularly good voice, but I love having a good sing with people around me who can drown out the, the bad notes that I make, and I've really missed that. For those people who are sports fans, I bet they've really missed standing on the terraces or the, or the touchline and shouting their, uh, for their team. We've really missed that. But there have been more serious ways that people's voices haven't been heard, haven't there? If you've been shielding or self-isolating during this pandemic, you may well have felt that your voice hasn't been heard. You may well have experienced the loneliness and the sense of isolation that's come with that. And I know that for many, telephone calls and Zoom calls and WhatsApp groups have been a real lifeline. And institutions are often not good at listening to people's voices, are they? There have been some terrible examples of victims of abuse not being listened to. And the church, to, to our shame, has been very guilty of that. But recently there have been some really good examples of people who have been listened to. 150 million people voted in the American presidential elections and many of them were people who haven't had the opportunity or encouragement to vote before. Their voices have been heard. And closer to home, Marcus Rashford, the Manchester United footballer, um, who himself knew poverty when he was a child and knew, knew what it was to be hungry, has been speaking up for families who found it really hard to feed their children during the school holidays. Because of his advocacy, their voices have been heard. It's really important, isn't it, that we are listened to. Because when somebody listens and really hears us, it says to us that we matter, whatever our age or our gender or our colour or the state of our bank balance or where we live, we matter because our voice has been heard. The writers of the Psalms understood the importance of being listened to. The Psalms are a collection of prayers and songs and poems that we found, find in the Old Testament of the Bible. And they include songs of joy and triumph, but also poems and prayers of grief and lament. And going all the way through the, the, the Psalms, the writers find comfort in a God who listens. And so in Psalm 18 we hear, in my distress I called to the Lord, to my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. My prayer for all of us in the midst of these uncertain times is that we will all know that we are loved and heard and treasured by God who knows us all by name and who listens when we call out in distress. But I also pray that we will have eyes to see and ears to hear those in our families, our neighbourhoods, our communities who feel left out, forgotten, not listened to, so that they too might be able to say, 
My voice has been heard. I matter. May God bless you. Amen. <laughs>